Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about WD Red SSDs, the SA500 series. These are their new range of SSDs that are designed for NAS users. Now, today I'm going to be doing some performance benchmarks utilizing this drive. All of the tools that I'm going to be utilizing are ones that we're all very, very familiar with for PC desktop use. So before a number of you immediately put it in there in the comments about why am I testing a NAS drive with these tools, that is very, very true. That is not the optimal environment for testing this disc. But to give you some idea about the performance benchmarks of this drive on its own, it is significantly easier to display that information there for you using desktop applications. After this, I will be doing another video where I get a couple of these discs in a read-write caching environment and showing you just how, what the performance benefits are of including these inside your NAS drive. And finally, I'll be doing another test utilizing these as raw storage inside the this QNAP and then accessing it over 10 GBE or Thunderbolt to show you exactly the performance benchmarks that these NAS optimized SSDs can give you. If you want to learn more about the specifications, hopefully there's been some on screen while I've been talking. And on top of that, do check out my product overview that went live a couple of weeks ago where I talked about exactly what these drives will give you. Today's video is going to be utilizing the 500 gig model. And this 500 gig drive uh, is available now for about 80 to 90 pounds without the VAT, I believe from the guys at span.com. There should be a link in the description. And we are taking advantage of the two and a half inch drive model. So this utilizes standard 3D TLC NAND. Uh, it's very low power consumption and it is the 500 gig model as stated. If we get that out of there, sorry that crackling was too close to the mic. When you do get one of these drives, you will get your warranty information and these arrive with five years of manufacturer's warranty. And on top of that, you get your seven mil height drive. Now, once again, there is a link in the description to give you real-time information about the specification of this disc, the power consumption that they've got it rated for, as well as more information about the Marvel controller inside and the optimal environment to take advantage of these. It's also worth highlighting they're available in two, two and a half inch, just like this, as well as M2 SATA based media. But without further ado, I'm going to get this put inside that PC. I'm going to start performing some of the benchmarks for this disc. Right, so here we are on the desktop where we're going to be testing that WD Red SA500 drive. The system we're going to be utilizing is a fairly modest PC spec here. And again, I was going to utilize an i7 machine that I've got, but unfortunately I did not have a sufficient dock that could not limit this drive uh, to USB 3. So in order to take advantage of using direct SATA and 6 gigabit, I've had to use this PC system here. But that shouldn't affect the results too much. Um, also on top of that, do remember that I am utilizing screen recording software here, so that will make its mark uh, with regards to the rendering of this. That said, this test is not about judging this drive. Remember that because this drive is meant to be utilized in NAS, and therefore it should only really be judged in that environment. Now I've already mounted the drive, here is a drive W, but just to make sure you can see it, if we open up the storage tools, we can make our way into the storage tools, and we open it up and you can see our WD drive right here. This is the drive and it is this WD drive in, to in total. So there's our drive there. There's our WD Red SA500 drive, our 500 gig NAS SSD. And let's start making our way into the tests. So the first test that we want to perform is probably going to be an Atto benchmark test. Probably one of the most common tests out there. And with this one, we're going to be testing this drive here. And we're going to be testing it as low as 512 bits segments to 64 meg segments. Do remember that as this test runs, the, the increments of the test and the file format will grow over time. We're going to use a one gig test file here, and we're going to start running this test now. Now, as this happens, once again, I do want to remind you all that this is a test of an SSD that is primarily designed for NAS. So I am going to reserve any kind of full judgment regardless of what I see. One of the main things I want to address in this video while we see the speed tests is largely to do with standard versus enterprise SSDs in NAS. Now, as this test goes through different block sizes and different file sizes, it's worth highlighting that you will see their speeds increase. In a NAS environment, you will utilize different kinds of files. You'll deal with different kinds of file types, and indeed you'll deal with different block sizes. And at the same time in a NAS environment, 
most SSDs will be utilized for cache. This is going to be an area of super fast storage that supports an area of RAID enabled hard drives. The result is that the speed of the SSDs in this environment of direct read and writes is far, far less relevant. And a number of you have mentioned before, and particularly over the last few years when we've seen more NASes arriving with SSDs, uh, SSD slots or SSD caching supported, about utilizing standard SSDs versus Pro series SSDs. These are more enterprise level disks that may arrive with 10 years of warranty or ones that support NVMe. Um, and what I would say to you is that the majority of NASes, unless you're using a NAS that is specifically designed for tiered storage across different media types, or you're utilizing file types that support and can utilize enterprise media, or better still, the hard drives that you're using are enterprise-led, such as 7200 um, enterprise-level drives with 256 to 500 meg cache, then you're not going to see the performance benefits of Pro Series SSDs in your NAS, unless the rest of the NAS setup is Enterprise 2. And that was one of the main things I'm looking forward to seeing when I do my comparison tests of this drive in a NAS environment. We're already seeing the drive now start to max at these um, block sizes right here, these formats, I should say. And we're seeing it cap out at reads of well over 500. And that 474 and 475 is pretty much the target now in terms of write. After the Atto test, we're going to do a specific SSD benchmark test utilizing AS SSD just to see how the drive performs in that environment. But right now, the test is performing, I would say, even better than I suspected. I didn't really think it would cap out so soon. Um, the fact that it's reached its height even at 8KB is pretty impressive for me. And, you know, this is... And, uh, you know, this isn't an enterprise level drive. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, this does utilize standard um, VNAND 3D. And the controller, that Marvel controller, gives you quite a lot of bang for your buck. It doesn't use, you know, triple layer, I believe. Uh, and on top of that, it's not designed to compete um, directly in terms of architecture with the likes of a uh, Samsung Pro Drive or any of the other top tier performance SSD. But that's because this is an SSD designed for NAS. Now, this is about to wrap up with the final part of the speed testing there. And once this is done, we'll make our way into the AS SSD benchmark. Once again, I am not going to judge these results in any kind of real impactful way. That is for you, the viewer, to take advantage of. But what I would say is a number of you out there watching this, you would probably stand to benefit from taking notes of these um, settings, uh, sorry, these results, for you guys out there that are looking to buy these drives in a non-NAS environment. I don't advise you do that, but I know a number of you because of NAS hard drives having such great warranty and great vibration support, you do have a tendency to use those drives outside of NAS. So next, we're going to use AS SSD for drive, um, SSD drive environments. Once again, we're going to use a one gig test file, and we're going to utilize that WD SSD for NAS. It's going to be doing sequential tests, 4K tests, which do bear in mind these numbers will appear lower overall. And after that, we'll take a look at those results and we can test both IOPS and read write. So let's test read write for now and click start and get things underway. So with this one gig test file, we'll immediately have hit with sequential read write that 450 megs there. The read, we expected that to be higher anyway, and it does not disappoint. The 4K um, read write is obviously going to be a bit lower, but we will see <coughs> increases later on. I apologize for that cough. I could cut it out, but I'm definitely not going to because these tests are up and running. Um, what I'll do for now is I'm going to sort of tone down the talking. Uh, I'm not going to fast forward. I'm just going to leave these tests running in the background there so you can see the results happening live. And then I'll run an IOPS test and then maybe move on to a final tool. But for now, I'm gonna stop talking and let you guys watch the results.
there we go there's our test there and we can see the score there is 900 and again no judgment here you guys can use that information as you see fit for now now let's move over to doing the iops checks by this software so again using a one gig test file because remember that's what's important the size of the file don't take it out of context let's take a look at those iops using a one gig test file And we've reached the end of that test cycle and those are your IOPS. Once again, do remember we were using a one gig test file and results will differ depending on the size of the test file and the IOPS test you wish to run. The next test we want to do is to utilize black magic. I know it's not really a program people traditionally use for hard drives, but it has always stood me in good stead. And I'll be honest, I always quite like using it. So let's have a look here. Let's open this up. Let's do again, a one gig test file. And we will be utilizing the SSD one more time. Let's go down there. Let's find the drive. Let's go into this PC, find the W drive. There we are. Let's move that over there and get the test started. So again, you will see fluctuating tests throughout this. We were going to be getting that raise bar there with the right do. Um, the right there, when we're utilizing quite heavy 4K files, you will notice that change. But things will differ throughout the entire test and do take special note of the values down here when it comes to black magic and those of you that already know black magic will almost certainly take advantage of these now what we're seeing straight away in terms of black magic's video performance playback tests are you know what i would expect from an ssd black magic isn't really designed for this kind of test for a standalone ssd delivered by sata and more to do with external drives and multimedia level drive devices but I'm seeing some good numbers here that I personally would definitely count on. I'm going to wrap things up here. Um, I'm going to after this, I'm going to be doing some tests on the WD14 TB red hard drive for NAS, and then after that, we're going to start our NAS performance tests, which finally will lead into the comparisons with some of the bigger NAS Media Drive competitors. I hope you found this useful. There should be a NAS Compare article in the description, which has lots of more information about the tests we've done today, along with a bunch of screen grabs. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you've got any questions about this or some other tests you'd like to see performed while I've got these drives here in the test area, do let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.